In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the Edgeworth box diagram or graph. Your professor is probably drawing a diagram like this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to dissect this out and show you what all these pieces and components mean, and I'm going to build it back together for you again. The Edgeworth diagram or graph shows the trade or exchange between two individuals and even two countries sometimes. Now I'm going to pull the Edgeworth diagram apart into its two components. It turns out the Edgeworth box diagram is just two indifference curves plotted on top of each other. You can review indifference curves or about indifference curves by visiting YouTube Economics Fun and Playlist Consumer Theory. You can also click on this link. We have two indifference maps. Rugby tickets along the vertical axis and baseball tickets along the horizontal axis. David's indifference curves are on the left and Joe's indifference curves are on the right. Of course, David's utility increases upward like that, increasing utility. The same is true for Joe as well. We have two indifference maps, one for David and one for Joe. Now if I take Joe's indifference map and I rotate it 180 degrees and I slide it over to the left, now it should be sliding over, you'll see this is how we build the Edgeworth box diagram. Let me slide this to the middle of the uh, screen, right there. Now Joe's increases utility, increasing utility goes from up downward like that because we rotated it, and David's utility remains as it was before. Now I could label all the indifference curves like I could label it ID1, ID2, ID3 for David and J for Joe something like that, but I, I don't want to do that right now because it gets a little messy and it's not necessary. The vertical axis denotes rugby tickets and on the left side it goes from 0 to 40 tickets with 20 in the middle. And on the right hand side it goes from 0 from the top to the bottom, 0 to 40, and again 20 in the middle. If I label on the left-hand side 35, that means on the right-hand side it has to be 5 because every point on this graph or the diagram has to add up to 40. 15 on the left-hand side, 25 on the right-hand side, and of course, again, this adds up to 40. So and then we have a left and right-hand vertical axis. We have a bottom and top horizontal axis, and baseball tickets go on the bottom, and baseball tickets go on the top. The bottom axis, bottom horizontal axis, goes from 0 to 50 baseball tickets, with 25 in the middle, halfway. The top horizontal axis goes from 0 to 50, the opposite direction, like that, and again with 25 in the middle. Let me get rid of baseball tickets at the top. It's getting a little messy, like that. Just like before, if I have five baseball tickets on the bottom, I'll have 45 baseball tickets at the top. Every point has to add up to 50. The top and bottom axis always add up to 50. Let me move that rugby tickets out of the way there so it's not so messy. And that's what that looks like, and I'll put back in the indifference curves right there. This green dashed line I draw in here, this is called the contract line. And let me put little dots in to represent where all these indifference curves touch. This is where David and Joe would exchange tickets at an optimal level if they were optimally exchanging tickets. They could exchange at the red dots, but we would consider that inefficient exchange, and I'll explain that in a second. Why that's considered inefficient exchange. Let me fade away what's not necessary. I've left two indifference curves for David, and the first one is that one, but David actually would prefer the higher indifference curve. He would like to reach that indifference curve. 
because he prefers it. And Joe, he's indifferent along his indifference curve. That whole curve, he's indifferent to any point along that curve. They'll eventually meet and trade there because it represents an efficient level of trading. Again, to that point right there. Along that curve, Joe is the same. He's no worse off, as we often say. But David, David's actually better off because he's actually now able to go from this indifference curve, the first one, to the second one. So he's able to reach a higher level of utility, and Joe is no worse off. So they would gravitate to this point there where the two indifference curves are the same. That's called a Pareto optimality. All these green dots represent a Pareto optimality, and the contract curve is a, or the contract line, is also considered a Pareto optimality. And this is called efficient exchange. I'm going to focus just on Joe's indifference curves for a second. And this dashed line represents the slope of the tangent line of the indifference curves. This has a very special name called the marginal rate of substitution. M R S M R S. And this is true for any indifference curve for Joe. The same is going to be true for David. So if I go back and just look at David's indifference curves, the dashed line represents the slope of the tangent line to the indifference curve. And it's also called marginal rate of substitution or MRS. And the marginal rate of substitution can be found for any of David's indifference curves along his map. Let me adjust that just a tad back right there. Now when I draw Joe's back in, his indifference map and the contract line, you'll find that they touch these green points are located where the marginal rate of substitution for David and Joe are equal. So David's MRSD, or marginal rate of substitution for David, is equal to Joe's marginal rate of substitution noted by a J. And this is true for all points along the contract curve or all those green dots. David and Joe trade where their marginal rates of substitution are equal. That's called efficient distributions. The red dot is not efficient because the marginal rate of substitution for David, the slope of the tangent line, is not equal to the marginal rate of substitution for Joe. So we say these are not equal, slopes are not equal, and therefore we call that inefficient distributions. This is just an introduction to the Edgeworth box diagram. I showed you the efficient distribution, the contract curve, and I also talked about how those points are chosen. The Edgeworth box diagram is nothing more than two indifference maps plotted on top of each other, which we can see here. It represents how two individuals would trade two different commodities, in this case, rugby tickets and baseball tickets. One of the indifference maps are just rotated 180 degrees and plotted right on top of the first one. You'll probably have to watch this video twice, as well as you'll probably have to review about indifference curves, which can be found on this channel under the playlist Consumer Theory. And that's been the Edgeworth Box Diagram, an introduction.